a virus, it, it, it's a particle. It goes to everybody. So if somebody is immune, the virus also goes in, into this body. And it will multiply even a little bit. But if you're immune, you attack the virus first with antibodies and you make immediately debris, the virus is destroyed, you have only parts of the virus around in, in your tissue, if you make a swap or in your blood, if you go and test your, you will find this, this debris and part of the debris will be nucleic acids, RNA. And if you make a PCR, all these people will be positive because the PCR picks up two tiny, or if it's a good assay, three, sometimes two, sometimes only one tiny little piece of RNA that is then amplified. And this assay cannot tell you whether you had the virus or you just had some dead chunk of the virus, which still gives you a positive result. So, so uh, corona positive with a PCR, everybody should realize it tells you only a little tiny bit of DNA, of RNA, nucleic acid was there, but it doesn't tell you whether it was a, what the virus complete or even a virulent, uh, meaning a virus that can really make you sick. All this is not in this test. The most panic-inducing principle, namely the most media still speak about today we had so and so many new infections. Well, the latest government figures show the highest daily number of new infections. As the increase in the number of daily infections, 322 new cases of infection. Which is totally, it's not true. Because you can shed RNA for up to three months, despite having the infection for only eight days, we are potentially following people who are red herrings. Well, with coronavirus infections in England doubling every seven to eight days. So when you're picking up asymptomatic people, we know that the majority of the infections at the moment are in young adults. You have no idea if they have active infection or did they have it two months ago because you intermittently shed this RNA and it's the same for all viruses. A steep rise in coronavirus infections in England you end up with this problem of false positive. You are identifying too many people who could have had the infection in the past. The rate of infections are uh, growing significantly. With what is clearly a second wave of infection about to break. When you do a PCR test, you basically amplify the amount of RNA. You put it into a DNA copy and then you exponentially double that amount of DNA. And that's called the cycle threshold. Now you can put in a threshold level which says you are infectious which is a cycle threshold of about 25. And if you do that, you can pick up the people who are infectious. But the way we're deploying the test at the moment is in a sort of rag bag way that says, whatever amount of RNA you've got on board, you are positive. And a cycle threshold above 35 generally is people who are not infectious. The figures out today have shown an uptick in infection rates in London. Yet NHS England documentation that has not been updated since January runs cycle thresholds to 45, which is identifying people who are not infectious. 